Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, with another video presentation for you all. Sorry, I've not been that active recently. I've been incredibly busy, and I've just not been as motivated as usual to make videos. But at least today, I'm feeling a tad more inspired. But a star attraction today is Utah Raptor, meaning Utah's predator, which is a very fitting name for this amazing species of dinosaur. With Utahraptor actually being a genus of theropod dinosaurs containing only a singular species called Utahraptor, and bear with me for this, Ostromasaurium, with the species being the largest known species in the Dromosauridae family, making this an incredible, incredibly potent predator due to its large size. Fossil specimens can date Utahraptor's existence all the way back to the upper Barremian stage of the Cretaceous period, some 126 million years ago. As the name suggests, Utahraptor would have roamed North America, and it's rather safe to say it would have been found running around Utah if you were to go back in time to prehistoric Utah. It's quite highly likely you would have come across this fearsome predator and it probably would have not been much left of you afterwards. The largest described species of Utahraptor reached an estimated 7 metres or 23 feet in length and weighed around 500 kilograms, which to put into some perspective for us all, it's comparable to a large fluffy polar bear in terms of size but this is not something despite being slightly fluffy with feathery features and a feathery appearance you'd most likely not want to come across a prominent and rather spectacular feature of Utahraptor was its large curved claws with one species claws or one sp specimen's claws I should say reaching 22 centimeters close to 9 inches in length, making it an incredibly potent and deadly weapon to come across. As the actual, even looking from this picture, and also being just the word raptors, for general, like birds of prey, are predators. And most rapt all raptor species, I think, essentially, by focusing on dinosaurs for predators. It's quite safe to say Utahraptor was a large predatory carnivore that probably would have attacked hadrosaurs, like your duckbill dinosaurs, and fed upon smaller or moderately sized sauropods. I apologise for the pronunciation of some of these names now, just in case I horribly butcher one or two of them, but we should be alright. But I wanted to include some lovely species which are both from the Barremian stage of the Cretaceous period. One of these species, being related to Utah Raptor, is known as Achillobator, or Achillobator which name translates, translates into Achilles' hero, the famed Greek, I think it was Greek, yeah it was Greek mythology, Hero that, I think it's got an arrow shot into his uh, Achilles he uh, heel. Which is like when you get the phrase, your Achilles heel, like meaning your weakness. And ends up dying from that, I think. But that is all mythology. we got the lovely Iguanodon, or Iguanatooth, one of my favourite dinosaurs. And a really spectacular uh, species of herbivore with a lovely, delightful thumb strike. A thumb strike? A thumb spike. Which you could have used to deter predators, possibly. We also have got the rather unusual dinosaur, and quite an unusual picture I actually managed to find for it, called Apolosaurus, meaning a weapon lizard. Whether the actual name in terms of weapon lizard refers to its tail or its powerful neck it remains to be seen. And then we have Falcaris, meaning sickle cutter, which could refer to the, or most likely does refer to, the sharp sickle-like claws attached to its arms and possibly to its feet. We've got a lovely little image of Utahraptor showing off many feathery characteristics which can link it to modern day birds and raptor species. The first specimens of Utahraptor were found in 1975 by Jim Jensen in the Dalton Wells Quarry in East Central Utah, but these find findings didn't actually receive much attention overall. The actual type species and the only known species of Utahraptor by the name of Utahraptor Ostromyrium or Ostromyrium, however you want to pronounce that because I really struggle with that word, was named by Kirkland, Gaston and Burge in June of 1993 for the American paleontologist John Ostrom. Earlier it had actually been planned to name the species Utahraptor spobilii after film director Steven Spielberg in uh, exchange for funding numerous different research projects based on paleontology so it's just possibly like maybe just more funding the technology put into expeditions look while looking for fossils well the image on the right shows a utahraptor but this is probably if i had to take a get rough guess 
sketched a fairly long while ago, or drawn a fairly long while ago. There were no prominent feathery features or quill knobs on this Uteraptor, and it is sort of becoming more of a commonplace thing that most raptor species, and even many tyrannosaurs, were indeed feathered. That's the thing, a lot of people who don't study paleontology, or even some people that do study paleontology, unfortunately it's all based in a lot of their base knowledge off Jurassic Park or off TV series and games, but unless you actually put a lot more research, look at it more in depth, you don't get the full understanding. Moving on, let's get to our little fun facts section, ladies and gents. Uteraptor's probably, well, as of yet, the largest species of raptor yet discovered. However, if more complete specimens of Archilobata, or Archilobata, are found, then this might actually change, because it might be actually better arrive with it for size, but we'll have to see if more specimens are found then. In the BBC series, Walking with Dinosaurs, Uteraptor was mistakenly placed on the wrong bloody continent. With Uteraptor, as the name suggests, meaning, dino uh, I think it's Predator from Utah, and obviously the, the actual animal itself being based in North America, the episode in which they display Uteraptor is featured being based in Europe. So I don't know how it managed that, unless it's from across the channel, across the pond. Uteraptor was nearly named after Steven Spielberg in exchange for funding for studies relating to paleontology, such as fossil expeditions and probably research looking at oh, no, stuff such as maybe phylon ugh, fuck, I'm about it, phylo phylogenetics or genetic material or stuff like that, although I'm just trying to go off the top of my head here, because the amount of studying you can actually do in terms of fossils and specimens can be quite limited. Oh, here's a really, really interesting image, and oh, yes, I've used this from a certain little game called Ark Survival Evolved, which has it started off on the PC, and at the moment it's on early access on the Xbox. I don't think it's sort of early access on the computer as well, but it is a really interesting dinosaur on this Ark Survival Evolved, which is a really interesting and rather weird game in itself, but you actually have the ability to tame Uteraptor and ride it around and use it as a mount and even give it a name, which I've chosen to call my Uteraptor, which is only quite low level. Echo at the moment. But, moving on, this animal on the Ark is pretty much the bane of my entire bloody existence while playing that game. The amount of times I've been minding my own business, and what happens on Ark, whenever you're attacked, this like dramatic music comes on, like starts playing in the background, showing you're being attacked, the amount of times you think, oh, what's attacking me? You look behind me and you see this seven or eight foot behemoth munching down on you, clawing you. It's ridiculous, and you can't bloody outrun the thing either. If, it, if it's attacking you, you're essentially screwed. Unless you're really well equipped, or very, very lucky. And I, I often on Ark, I'm not very lucky when it comes to dinosaurs. Here we've got a lovely, delightful image of Uteraptor, showing many prominent feathery features, and this is a more accurate sort of representation of what Uteraptor should look like. Due to Uteraptor being a large carnivore with a claw estimated to be up to 24 centimetres in length, with Uteraptor also possessing thick foot bones, or thick leg bones I should say, meaning they may have actually had extra powerful muscles for killing large prey such as hadrosaurs or smaller species of sauropods. And if Uteraptor was indeed a pack hunter, if real research is done into this, it might have even been able to bring down larger prey such as the larger sauropods which might have roamed the continent of North America. Well, I'll finish off with this beautiful piece of paleo art from artist Emily Wilbury, a f artist who focuses on animals such as birds, dinosaurs and predatory mammals and brings them to life in amazing detail. And this p image is literally beautiful. We've got a few unknown species of birds flying in the air. We've got a lovely pristine beach landscape with three Utah raptors roaming the beach. And this is, I know I, I, I do like this image a lot, but I sort of like the Utah raptor looking a bit more fearsome. Like such as, if you go all the way back to the start of the, my presentation in slide two, that's like my favorite image of Utah raptor, if I was to, if I could like base it on anything I want to. But moving on, overall Utah raptor was a deadly and very large predatory dinosaur. That was really not to be trifled with. I hope you all enjoyed this presentation. Feel free to comment, like the video or dislike it and comment your feedback as usual. I'll try and do more videos recently but I've just been a bit busy with college work and I've just not quite been with it recently but I'll try and unleash more content for you. And also 
if you are in fact interested in like what you see you can join the Raptor Pack today by subscribing and for tomorrow for forever celebrates it have a really really merry Christmas and goodbye for now